Well, Frances Ledgewood was born in 1887 in Janesville, um, in Slane in County Meath. Uh, and he was a, a part of a large family, and that family fell on hard times after the death of his father. So his mother had to uh, take on work, and she also had to send the, the, her children out to work. Ledwidge left school at the age of 13 uh, and went to work, and he worked as a farm boy and he worked as a road mender. So he was very much out in the open air doing manual labour uh, at that stage. But his primary school education had fitted him in ways for a life of literature. His teacher, Thomas Madden, uh, had instilled a love of literature uh, in, in Ledwich. And he was very attracted, obviously, to writers like Oliver Goldsmith. But he also was very uh, interested in British poets, too. Uh, poets like Keith, Shelley, Byron, and also Tennyson. And so in many ways, his connection to landscape and place was both through uh, his own experience of the landscape around Slane and working in it, uh, but also uh, of the poetry that he was absorbing at the time. Ledwidge's experience of the First World War was quite contentious from the beginning because Ledwidge was a socialist and a nationalist in his political leanings. And in fact, when Redmond made his famous Woodenbridge speech, Ledwidge came out very strongly against Irish men enlisting in the British Army. And yet, very shortly afterwards, he would enlist himself. Um, there's been various different interpretations of that decision. Um, some people have argued that there was, uh, in Meath generally, there was a larger interest in and willingness to enlist, and that led which was caught up in, in that movement. Others will say that Lord Dunsany, who was his literary patron uh, for the couple of years preceding the outbreak of war, and because he enlisted, uh, or he, his regiment rather, was the uh, fifth and a skilling. Fusiliers, and so he, in, in a sense, attracted um, Ledwich to join with him. Oliver St. John Gogarty, for example, uh, described Ledwich, Ledwich as uh, Dunsany's harper during the war. Uh, so this idea that he had followed his his leader into war was, you know, one that was commonly held. But I think we can um, dispel that because um, we know that Dunsany actually. Um, discouraged Ledwich from signing up and he in fact had been giving him money to uh, devote more time to writing his poetry and he, he felt that Ledwich should stay in Ireland and continue writing and it was in a sense a point of tension between them. Um, but anyway Ledwich joined up and he spent some time in England um, at the start and then he was sent to Gallipoli uh, and he fought there and he was in fact returning, um, he was evacuated and was returning uh, to Ireland when he learned of the 1916 Rising. The interesting thing about Ledwidge's poetry is that it very rarely engages directly with the conditions of war. So he's unlike a poet like Wilfred Owen, for example, who engages very much with both the, um, the violence around him, its effect on his fellow soldiers, uh, in a very graphic way. Uh, but that's not what Ledwidge did in his poetry at all. In a sense, there's a, a great continuity in Ledwidge's work from the early pastoral poetry that he wrote as a very young man and the work that he wrote during the war years. But what emerges in those poems is a kind of emotional depth that wasn't there previously. And that emotional depth is obviously created by the conditions of war, by fear, and also by his, his connection to his comrades. And um, so he often juxtaposes a description of, often a description of the landscape that he's based in, um, and he juxtaposes that to an Irish uh, landscape that he remembers and longs to return to. So it's very much that sense of distance from home, alienation in a landscape, that's a key to, to Ledwidge's war poetry.